Okay, welcome. In this video, we'll provide a brief overview of the Educational Activity Guide, Making Connections at the Baskin Lifeways and You, and of the companion website on Smithsonian's Learning Lab. These resources provide an opportunity to visit with the Athabascan peoples of Alaska by looking closely at their cultural belongings cared for by the Smithsonian Institution, by learning about their ways of life, and by making connections through activities readers can do wherever they live. The guide was created with K-8 students in mind, but we hope to engage learners and educators of all ages. So let's start with introductions. Uh, Melissa, would you like to go first? Yeah, um, Willie Jan and Sarota, Melissa Shagnos Setelan, Yudishyoth Koyakara Etlan, Naitini Ana Kayak Sensiadin, Artist at Curator Hogeshna, Chenan. My name is Melissa Shagnoff. I am Caribou and Fish Eater Clan from Naitini Ana, or the Log of the River, or Chikalun Village. And I am one of the contributors to this guide. Thank you, Demi and Casey. Hey, I'm Demi Maharis. Um... Atna Athabaskan, originally from Chickaloon, cousin of Melissa Shaganoff, and uh, co-founder of 80% Studios, where we are recording out of. I'm Casey Silver, uh, the other half of 80% Studios, and together we provided the uh, graphics and the uh, illustration for the project. Thank you. My name is Dawn Bittison. I'm a museum specialist at the Arctic Studies Center, which is part of the National Museum of Natural History which is part of the Smithsonian Institution. So to get things started, I thought we'd take a view of the um, educational activity booklet. And um, Melissa, um, we can talk about the content development for the booklet. Melissa, would you like to speak about some of the content that's on the cover? Yeah, so um, the really kind of driving sort of source of this of this project was um, working with cultural belongings in the collections of the Smithsonian. So here you see some of the belongings that we feature in each lesson. So you have the birch bark basket, the moccasins, the snowshoe, and then um, the the sheep horn spoon. Uh, you also have some illustrations too that Demi has done um, and Casey has designed and you know, the dentalium and the quill work patterns, we really wanted to, you know, create a guide that felt very Diné, very Athabascan, uh, and and also, you know, created kind of an, a learning aesthetic, you know, and how we can use these materials um, to celebrate our culture and then also, uh, you know, inspire other young people and kids to talk about their own culture. And the cover, you know, you also see the the main kind of character of this this guide, which is uh, the Wolverine character, the Auntie Melissa character, uh, going through and guiding you through the lessons. Okay, let's take a look at the introduction. Another important part of this guide was that we were pulling from Diné resources that are, you know, archived on the Learning Lab website, and this includes essays and other sort of Athabascan elders and culture bearers, you know, sharing personal stories, sharing th their sort of personal knowledge and and really kind of um, the critical, you know, work to reclaim and hold on to our cultures. And so we decided to use actually one of the essays featured on the Learning Lab uh, website uh, by Eliza Jones, uh, a Koyakon elder, um, where she talks about Athabascan people about our our land, about where we're located, and then also kind of our, our deep sort of connections to um, material culture towards the animals, the land, the waters, and, and how we sort of view those things um, as a people and culture. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, why don't we take a look at the first activity? Uh, so a, an important part of going through these activities was kind of deciding like what the theme of every activity would be and and the theme and what turned into really like a lesson was through the cultural belongings. You know, what is what does this cultural belonging say about Athabascan people? And I think even by extension, as we're going through and creating these these lessons, it became more about what does it say about about people, about the things that we need to need to know and the lessons that we carry with us. Um, so this this cultural belonging is a sewing bag, a roll-up sewing bag, a Hanat Sesi, 
Um, and it's something that uh, you would carry all your tools and the things that you needed every day, you know, in order to to be prepared in life. And um, it was really kind of the the Diné, the Athabaskan lesson of always being prepared. And I worked with my auntie, um, Sandra Shaganoff Stewart, who worked with Helen McLean um, to talk about, you know, what is the Hanat Sesi, what is this culture belonging, the sewing bag um, mean for, for Diné people? And uh, yeah, and so part of this lesson, if you want to go to the next page, is um, and is for the students to really think about what tools they need in their life and to list them out here um, in, in the first window. And the second window would to be, you know, if you were to draw a bag, if you were to create a bag that held all these tools, what would it look like? You know, so people can think about their culture, think about, you know, their home and their family and the people around them and and what sort of things do they need to carry with them, um, you know, in order to be prepared in life. Thanks, Melissa. Let's take a look at one more activity. Something a really, I think, important part for me in being part of this project and what I feel very grateful for is that I've been able to share a lot of my personal stories and even share that um you know with my cousin Demi you know and uh so this lesson um is uh kind of centered around the the Athabascan tunic or dress and um so I recalled you know when I received my you know first first dress um, from my aunt Sandra, who was also kind of informed the first lesson we just talked about, and you see this really um, you know sweet drawing that uh, that Demi did of us. Um, that's me as a as a little girl, <laughs> and uh, my cousin Dylan, and uh, and of course my aunt Sandra. Um, and yeah, so I talk about, you know, what it meant to receive um, that dress and and really kind of the the kinship and relationship that um, came from that story of, of who made it, of how it was gifted to my aunt and then gifted to me. Um, you know, and then this is also kind of a, an exercise to uh, work with work with the students, the audience about thinking about, um, you know, within their own culture and their own family, you know what's a what's an important um, important piece of of uh, clothing that you have. So we were asking um, the students to interview someone to talk about where it came from, and and also you know um, make a drawing of 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 the of that of that uh, um, regalia. Thanks, Melissa. Um, Damian Casey, um, how about uh, sharing with us a bit about some of the design within the activities. We've seen once before already this framing of the activity that a reader would do. Could you talk a little bit about these two elements? Yeah, we wanted to kind of create a consistency throughout the activities. And when you see this framework, this quill framework, um, which is the white and the green and the red, it kind of denotes that you will be asked to write and, uh, and write and fill in um, you know, your answers there. Uh, it was based on some of the objects that we've been able to study a part of the collections. And then the uh, wooden frame below is an area that you are supposed to draw inside of. And that wooden frame is inspired by uh, some of the wooden bowls that we were able to take a look at and, and pull inspiration from. Thanks. Uh, let's look at another one of your interesting design choices on another page. Could you speak a little bit about this one? Yeah, so sometimes we took uh, inspiration from the activities themselves. And this is an activity about um, animals that get caught in snares. And so we use a um, caribou pattern, kind of caribou track um, to kind of guide the eye and to frame the information. Thanks, let's look at um, another one. Here we used um, quill work from actually the tunics that Melissa had shown. Um, this is kind of a close up on, a, of it um, as a design element. Um, but there's also, you can see quill work and bead work that is on the, the mittens. Very detailed. And speaking of that bead work, let's look at the back cover. Yeah, beadwork is such a huge part of so much of, you know, our culture and so much of the, you know, the art and embellishments um, of these different pieces. And we really wanted to kind of focus in and highlight some of that gorgeous beadwork. And it inspired this this design that you see here on the back, you know, bright, colorful and uh, lots of detail and intention goes into this beadwork. 
Yeah, we really was it was it was really nice to be able to um to to work with Demi and Casey to kind of design these things and to think about like how to how to utilize them in this really beautiful way. I mean, you can tell in in the Wolverine character every lesson she has a different pair of earrings on, which are like my earrings <laughs> that I sent pictures of to Demi, you know, so it's very uh it's all it's all kind of about the family and the artist and, you know, representing that. Well, and we've spoken a little bit about how um, Demi and Casey as artists, you drew from um, cultural belongings from museum collections, for instance, the pair of beaded mittens and the beadwork that we see on this page. There's an additional activity in the booklet that we put together. Could you speak a little bit about this? Because to me, it looks like it actually refers to some of your, um, the process of the own your own artwork that you do, both what you did for this um, activities booklet and in the comic stories that you also create and draw. Yeah, we, we created a, a project, a graphic novel called Chickaloonies, which is you know very much in line with these activities and these projects where we're looking at these historical items and these cultural belongings and trying to figure out ways to um, incorporate, you know, the designs and, and the, the, the methods which they use to make them and, um, creates sort of a new visual style. And we wanted to include this as an example here for somebody using the activity to start thinking about how you can, you know, look at some of these historic items and, and the ways that they were made and the art and the, you know, the, the design work and figure out how you can adapt those into something new and original, um, combining them with modern, you know, modern fashion, modern styles. Yeah, thanks. And and they also created a page right here. You can see where um, readers can start working on creating some of their own styles. Yeah, this is really cool. And so this is the idea, you know, after you sit there and think about what maybe you could take from your culture or, you know, look to for inspiration. Here's a chance to express your ideas and our and little Ermine character there to kind of keep you company. Thank you. And speaking of the um, Chickalini's comic work that you guys uh, have done, um, they've also created a resource that's available on the Learning Lab website about that. So in addition to um, what we've been going over today, um, the Learning Lab website, and let me screen share again, has additional resources that are available that complement the educational activities booklet. And in some instances on pages where there's bonus and extra content, it refers directly to the Learning Lab website and you can link to it through a QR code. So on the website, you'll find a downloadable PDF of the booklet in two parts, an answer key as well for some of the activities, a poster. You can learn more about Melissa and Demi and their work. You can learn more about the contributors like Melissa's aunts who helped us on this project and other people from the um, Athabascan communities whose knowledge was shared during the making of this guide. There's a lot of extra content on here and then there's um, references to additional educational resources based on Athabascan heritage here at the bottom. And let me go to a different part of the Learning Lab site. On the main page of uh, the Learning Lab website, there's four different sections. The first section on Alaska Native cultures, it includes essay written by Alaska Native experts, including the one we mentioned earlier, written by Eliza Jones on Athabascan culture. And you can also see ancestral belongings that are in the Smithsonian collections and learn about them from Athabascan people who contributed to uh, research for the Living Our Cultures exhibition that's at the Anchorage Museum. Let me go back to the main page. The next section, and this is where you'll find the Making Connections entry right here. Um, this is a section with different uh, lessons and curriculum for uh, educating in a classroom or at home. And um, each entry has all the resources that are needed for teaching um, the lessons and um, including free PDFs to download. And the subjects include learning about storytelling and creating comic art. And that's the Chickalunis project that Demi and Casey mentioned that we actually all worked on together. And that's that entry right here. There's also educational resources um, on Alaska Native park designs, Athabascan values, Alaska Native games, salmon and Alaska Native knowledge and arts and, and more. The next section, are community videos related to Alaska Native arts and languages. These arts videos uh, include in detailed information on these art forms 
and the videos include time you can spend with Alaska Native experts, and those videos link to educational resources and the prior section. And then the final section called Conversations and Additional Collaborations features subject-based webinars, and it also features a project called Coming Home, Reclaiming Aunt Knowledge Through Museum Collections, and that was also a source of information for the educational activity booklet, as well as all of the research that was behind the um, Sharing Knowledge website and the Living Our Cultures exhibition. I think we can um, wrap up here. I wanted to start um, our thanks by saying, you know, thank you for watching this video and spending time with the Making Connections Guide and its online resources. I'd just like to thank that um, the supporters of this project. Um, it was made possible through the generous support from the Smithsonian Institution's Office of the Undersecretary for Education, with additional support from the Smithsonian Regional Councils, FedEx, and the Alaska Office of the Arctic Study Center, National Museum of Natural History. So thank you so much for joining us. Melissa, Demi Casey. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, enjoy the workbook. Melissa's on mute for the very end. <laughs> <laughs> Shenan Sagu. <laughs>